Hey guys, um, so today I'll be talking about my latest study. Um, I've published this on Instagram. Um, it's not done, but I thought it was ready to publish and I thought it was high time I showed you guys um, recent changes in my workflow, I guess I would say. Um, so I've talked in a lot of different journals, uh, journal submissions, design journals, portrait studies, time lapse, all of that. I've talked about the importance of the technique. Um, my basic technique. So uh, discussing large brush to small brush, zooming out, doing as much work zoomed out, delaying detail, um, not being too concerned with likeness. Uh, it was just, the list goes on. It was a lot of stuff that, you know, a student would waste time on um, zooming in, focusing on details, rushing contrast, um, and uh, this time around, I felt like I, because I had taken such a long break away from my art, I felt like I was already doing all that. I broke all of my techniques. Um, but I was aware of that. I was aware of the fact that my techniques were faulty um, going into this piece. I didn't really do any measuring. But my mindset was, this recent mindset that I discovered, it was... I was going to let myself make the mistakes and then correct thereafter just to have something to correct. So sometimes if you feel like you're not going to complete a piece because you're kind of out of touch with your techniques, you're kind of removed from the art experience, you've taken too long a break like I have, um, you, you, you go back in and you just wonder how on earth are you going to because when I draw on my art is performance, it's for, for major performance points for you know what I do. Um, so I, I have to do a good job in my next study. There's no choice. Um, I'm constantly recording what I do. It's my livelihood, so I have to constantly turn the camera on. So I was wondering how I was going to make something that I could give you guys, um, but also just take it easy and just do a study, just keep my mind on study and not so much on performance. And I said, I can just meet both halfway. I'm going to paint for mistakes, which is a new technique of mine, uh, which is crazy, I know. <laughs> but I don't think, you know, a student who's struggling with fundamentals should do this, not at all. Please do measure, it'll improve your work more than making mistakes and correcting afterward. But I found that because I was already doing that for my students, I was given a piece and it was faulty and I corrected it. I was going to treat my homework or my work as homework and um, let it become faulty. I allowed my work to be an accumulation of mistakes. Just from what we're looking at right now, there's tons of mistakes, but what I let myself do is correct them. So the eye was off. I knew the eye was off when I first laid the paint. I knew the eye was going to be completely off, but I didn't want to worry about that because there was a momentum, which is a very, very beautiful thing. It's not really inspiration. It's not, it's not, I wasn't really inspired or anything like that, but I would say the momentum, I had to completely get on top of that. I couldn't um, let that kind of uh, fade too quickly before I had a piece to work on. But honestly, up until two hours, it was just mistakes that I had already made that I was just correcting. Um, so the eye, where the eye is in the final piece, is like 15 to 20 shifts in the eye position. Where the nose was, I just wanted the nose to be on the face. I will correct where it's supposed to go later on. Uh, the, the distant eye, I really didn't care about the, about the correction um, until later. I just wanted to uh, address all of the major markers of a three-dimensional three-quarter view eye, meaning I had to make sure the far corner was hidden, I had to make sure it was spherical, I had to make sure it was rotated and stacked behind the nose. But I didn't care where it was placed. So as far as the digital medium, measuring for the proper scale and placement is something that we can afford to put in the back burner. We don't have to worry so much about uh, this kind, almost like obsessively compulsive obsession, I guess we can say, or compulsively obsess, obsessive um, value we put into measurement. I've talked about this before with the way that students who jump into gesture art uh, are obsessed with memorizing muscles. 
and mem it's, it's not our tool it's not our craft to memorize every single muscle if you were a medical student obviously that's different uh, just because of what textbooks refer to refer to where to place a needle you know all of that we got to know the geography of the human body but when we're talking about the tumultuous um, collision of repetitive brush strokes an infinite amount of brush strokes that result in a portrait um, that is all a meditation of light and edges uh, it's such a abstract thing to even put into words and let alone the practice itself and try to rein it in with excessive measurement I've told students that the best way to get likeness is to measure um, eyeballing is not something a student should venture into too often and I have a nice regimen a nice diet for my private students between reference and no referenced work so we go back and forth between measuring not measuring measuring not measuring but at one point or another measuring uh, nulls the creative process not that I am crazy about the creative I don't care about the creative process because you can call anything a creative process when it's finished um, so when I finish this portrait I can easily say oh yeah I had like this great time it was enjoyable I had a lot of fun that's not true and I wouldn't call the painstaking mistake making <laughs> that's a really good term that was this painting a creative process that makes it sound way too nice for what was actually going on in my head I was an, a sweaty mess I was I was just trying my best to make to allow myself to make something and then following up with like a 30 minute flash uh, critique of it after I opened it for the first time after closing it or something like that or taking a food break so it was it was a, a, a tug of war just to get the painting to get to, 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 the, to the end game that I wouldn't call it this beautiful creative process there was no I mean yes if you refer to the creative process as um, you know a, a, a quaking uh, a, you know if, if we if we remember to, to define it as a very very difficult process but it sounds too snowflake to say oh yeah that's my creative process no it was a mistake making painstaking mistake making and it was something I allowed myself to do um, so I didn't just you know struggle and not know what to do I knew where eventually to move the nose and the eye and what to do I knew what to do with every individual feature as an island and how to rotate it per the three-quarter view degree the specific degree of three-quarter view um, but from the placement of the eyebrow and the rotation there from the contrast in the eye and jumping back and forth to the study the nose and what I wanted to rush about the nose um, the mouth which tormented me honestly I didn't I don't remember it being this calculated measured thing I just placed paint and allowed myself to critique my work so I had to remove myself from my work so in essence I had to not love the work I was working so hard to make and it's really really uh, I don't like using this term but it feels like a schizophrenic process because you have to change your perspective constantly you have to be um, the, 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 the you know the, the, the doctor and you have to fix up shells have to be the patient <clears throat> so um, it was it was interesting but as usual the weirdest most difficult most annoying most unusual process results in the best painting and I had a really great reception on Instagram from it um, and a lot of people liked it uh, so th there's a something about loosening that um, you know that part of you that wants to that that kind of type A part of you that wants to go through and, and, and measure and pre sketch and prepare the landscape and then there's the part of you that just wants to get the brush moving because a moving brush is a good brush um, you know it's, it's a good process to stay moving it's when a paint when a painting slows down that's when bad things happen um, that's when you start over editing that's when you start changing shit that didn't even need changing one of my students is actually struggling with that and we started timing we started do, doing all kinds of stuff recording his process just so that we can stop the stagnation that is really bad for a painting if it's stagnation for the sake of like exploring different versions that's different of course but um, I just wanted my brush to keep moving and I did not want to stand too long in one spot 
So the way I did this was I just took breaks. So there's, you know, you'll notice pauses in the video where I'm not painting. That's just me away from my computer. And then I came back to it. The stream was still going and and I just, you know, I, I, I saw tons of mistakes. I saw enormous amount of mistakes. Um, the versions uh, that you'll see across the video, and I believe I saved one of them for the PSD for you guys, um, you'll see is, is, is really the, the, the face is too large and too low for the head. But that didn't really change how well I painted the eye, did it? The, 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 the eye is still in a great spot. Uh, in a great, not a great spot, but in a great stage. Um, it's still well rendered. I was getting compliments. I was, you know, I was, I was noticing that there was good reception on the eye, but of course there was that weird oversized upper part of her head and then the short lower part. So just remember before you guys, you know, think that every professional is one, their process is one good choice after another. It is not. I am here. Newsflash. It is not. It is as, met, as as prone to mistakes as possible. The only thing that the difference is that they just kept editing it and separating themselves from being too personally attached. Being excessively personally attached means you won't edit, which means this process won't work for you. In order to successfully do this, you have to be separated from your work. So I didn't measure. I jumped right in. I used contrast really early but that was allowed because I was already anticipating not being too attached to the study so that meant that I could move things around without being too scared to are you guys following the only way to do this self critiquing paint anything anywhere fix it later is to be able to fix it later to be able to separate yourself from it that way your brush keeps moving you're still you know focusing on one individual feature and then later organizing them all as one whole face so it's like doing, you know, different feature studies on the same canvas and just eventually tricking yourself into putting them all together as a face so that you can finish a full illustration. Um, and my studies are starting to look a lot like illustrations just because I've been adding the hair, I've been using the edges of the canvas. I wouldn't say they're a full illustration because there's no background or immediate story, but, um, or narrative. But there is some something of a narrative in the portraits, but I would say that's as far as an illustration as they get, but at least it's a finished portrait. And I did that by not treating it with any seriousness and not investing too much value in any present mistakes I was making because I knew that wasn't going to be the final version of anything. And I allowed my, myself to use as many brushes as I was going to use. It wasn't a quick study. It wasn't a 30-minute show all your brushes, show all your brush strokes study. It was hours and hours of streaming. Um, and I wanted to push the render as far as possible. Um, so I, you know, I, I wanted to use my brushes as infinitely as I needed to. <clears throat> the break in between is a really important part of this formula to success. Um, you have to make sure you take, you have to take a break. You have to separate the study over a number of days, a sleep, uh, you know, pattern. So sleep, draw, sleep, draw. Um, you have to make sure you're doing something, you know, other than art. And I'm um, luckily have this whole house to work on. So, um, and, and then that's another thing that I wanted to mention today is that while Renovating this house, I was in charge of a lot of the structural decisions involved in it. Not only was I in charge of the design, but I was in charge of the structure. How we were going to, you know, put a retaining wall, how we were going to take one down, how we were going to place the headers. I had to learn a lot about, um, uh, and I wouldn't say architecture or, or structural engineering or something like that, but I had to look up a lot of the fundamental code um, uh, ways to do things in between rooms and to installing a window and so it, it revealed a lot to me about what is really worth worrying about when it comes to measurement and how everything else at the end will just combine together I was if I was the same stickler I used to be I'd have gone out and got the best two by four I could have found I'd have measured where I was going to place every single screw, every single, you know, thing must have been marked with a ruler and that would have slowed down progress, right? This house taught me how to just let go as long as you've met the code requirements for the structure. 
which is when you paint every feature, make sure it's in three-quarter view. You will eventually piece it together. I mean, it's not, I'm not talking about a mirror reflection into the house. When you put a stud in the wrong way, you can't use, <laughs> you can't use lasso tool and move the stud where you need it to go. No, you have to, you know, actually, you can't do that. So you have to know where each stud is supposed to go to support the structure, to support the drywall, etc. Um, and another thing that this house taught me is that we did so much measuring to get the perfect cut of drywall, the perfect cut on the floors, um, that at the end I hated measuring and that I wanted a way to paint without measuring. And that was what I did with this piece. I did no measuring, so keep that in mind. And the way the piece turned out proportionate is I allowed myself to measure later by the comfort of our digital media. And then, you know, once that, once I located where that was supposed to go, eventually measuring the eye in the right place meant the nose needed to be shifted and everything fell into place. But I knew that the things I was moving, I did, I did render properly. So the nostril might have not been the right width, and that's okay, I fixed it later, but at least I used the contrast needed, and I entertained the edge, and I respected the light source. So what I'm saying today is measuring is the only thing that you can really mess around with. You can't um, fool around too much with light direction or the physics therein. Right? The physics isn't something that I... You know that anything can teach you to ignore too much unless you're jumping into abstract art and then we're talking about symbol art and no longer representational art which is realism <clears throat> so um, you know don't if, if you're at that stage where you just want to paint something and there's so much going on in your life around you that you don't have the mental capacity you don't have any more RAM you are in a state of fatigue and you just want to paint, this method is perfectly possible uh, for you. Just paint it and critique it. Separate yourself from it from being too personally attached. Get that apathy, you know, for your for your painting. It's really very useful uh, for your studies at least so that you can just get mileage going, going, going. You have an emotional relationship with every painting. You're never going to move on. You're never going to improve. So then that's what I'm talking about here is that you have to learn to separate yourself from this so that the emotional reaction is not delaying you. Every time you have to move a nose, you're like, oh, what if I ruin the painting? You probably did, but who cares? Because, you know, seven more movements this way, that way, it'll be in the perfect spot. You won't know until the painting is enough fulfilled that it was moved in the right way or the wrong way, but you'll move it then too. But if you're going to have an emotional reaction every time you find a mistake, you're never going to finish. I wanted to quit on this painting 15 times, I noticed, but I was self-aware. I wanted to quit on the painting many times. <clears throat> and I've been, you know, I'm a pretty transparent person when I'm streaming. I've been going through a lot in my personal life, along with the fatigue and the medical, you know, limitations, and the disabilities that I have. On top of the work that I had to do on the house, I was burned. I was beyond fatigued. I was burned out. I could barely grip my pen because having done so much work on the house, my hands don't work the same way they used to. I, I don't have the same hand strength, you know, between cleaning every single day and the dust and the getting coronavirus, <laughs> which I'm pretty sure I had. Um, you know, it, it, I was burned out and I just wanted to paint. There's that inner calling to paint, just that purpose. I picked a reference and I wanted to see what I could do. And I didn't copy the reference exactly because the features are very different in between mine and hers. And I wanted to kind of invest some of my own image of what I believe is beauty. <coughs> but, um,. And I just wanted to paint something, so I said, because of the rigidity of building this massive house and fixing it, I, in in comparison to it, uh, digital art was so much more forgiving, so I'm just going to use that to my advantage. Like I said earlier, you can't just lasso a bunch of the flooring you placed wrong and 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 place it in a new spot effortlessly. It's not very forgiving out here in the real world. So when we're working with a medium that is forgiving, we have a lot of wiggle room for how our for adjusting our painting process and our technique. 
I wouldn't say this is a safe technique to re recommend to beginners at all, um, but it is a solid technique for those who are skilled, who just are just so tired <laughs> of all of the fundamentals. They know they will entertain them, but to focus on them in the current moment is counterproductive just because there's no more mind space for sitting there measuring after you measured an entire room full of drywall, after you measured an, you know, 1,500 square feet of flooring, you want to just, uh, uh, just jump right in and get the brush moving. So this is a, a solid, a solid technique. So what we want to, to remember is that in this technique, you have to have a reference of some kind. Um, you can't kind of leave it all up in the air, no reference, no measuring, you're going to be struggling for a good while. A reference will work as a catalyst to help you envision where you want the face to go even if it's not copying the reference completely. And then when you want to start painting, just paint in general areas, general brush strokes, stay zoomed out, that'll help you catch mistakes faster. Remove yourself personally from being attached to the painting as it is because you know it's just a Frankenstein and you're just still editing it. You know it's just a, it's supposed to look fucked up. It's supposed to look messed up. And then be ready to do tons and tons of scale changes um, and, and lasso tool and moving around of stuff. And don't forget that your fundamentals, see this is a big change I just made, moving the face and the head, that was a big mistake that I had the entire process, but it didn't affect the painting at all, did it? But yeah, being ready to move things around with your lasso tool, being ready to, um, to adjust the painting scale-wise just so that we have a painting in the end. And in the end, what does it really matter? If we have a solid painting that's complete, what does it matter how we got there? Um, especially if, again, you're an advanced student and you just want to get things done and you want to get somewhere. <clears throat> and this painting was a, a real push for me for just my rendering skill. I just wanted to see how far I could go. I was emotionally invested in one way, which is I was trying to use her expression to express where I was emotionally. I was going through a really, really, really rough time and I was trying my best to um, not think about it. And by not thinking about it, I sort of thought about it through her expression, so indirectly or subconsciously or whatever. Um, so, it, you know, again, it was such danger of, being, of me being excessively emotionally attached to this piece. That, you know, there were so many ways I could have uh, failed and given up on it, but I didn't. And I want to remind you, I didn't because I allowed myself to really mess it up. And the re the entire process, you can see me just lassoing and re-lassoing, um, liquefying and retrying the mouth, repainting it. And all of this is while I'm on the stream talking to like a hundred viewers. Um, and which either made it harder or easier, I really don't know. It made, did it Was it harder to talk and entertain or did it make it better so that I looked away from my painting to read the comments and look back and find the mistake? It's hard to, sometimes it was easier, sometimes it was harder. But um, yeah, it, it, it's a solid method that you guys can explore. One thing that I kept getting from the, you know, from people who like the painting, who asked me about it, who's, who adore it, they said that it feels like I can touch the skin, feels like I can touch the face, and honestly, that was just something that I had the mind space to see, because I was allowing myself to just be super loose and try things I never tried. Not that I didn't want to, that I couldn't try them, but I didn't want to try them before. So now I wanted to, because I was like, hell with it. I'm going to try to make her skin more wrinkly, more saggy, more old. I'm going to give her that little bump under the eye that I instinctively just want to add. Um, the extra fat on the mouth. She doesn't have like super th uh, tight skin. It's just no human skin. It's going to sag a little bit over the years. Even on young faces, even on baby faces, you find skin sag. It's just gravity. Um, so then you, you know, you start to open your mind up to different uh, ways to apply this technique on things you never really wanted to do before or couldn't do. Another thing I did that people love and had in our response to and adored is the blur. 
I wanted to blur anything that wasn't important and I wanted to blur it a lot and that gave it a really cool camera effect. Um, I blurred it all that wasn't really a face. Um, I blurred the chin, I blurred the far cheek, I blurred the hairline, I blurred the curls in the back more than the reference as well and I just kept pushing and kept streaming and kept talking to them and kept you can see the chat right there and kept um, you know just 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 constantly following that routine of um, allow yourself to correct whatever decision you're making right now later if it's not the right decision who knows it might have been a, a plus you know to the pile that is the painting of good decisions or a minus to the good decision or not a good decision the, the pile of the finished piece let's call the finished piece a pile of coins every time you make a good decision you're adding to the pile and you have a bigger pile of coins meaning you have a better painting but you know if you're going to stop every time you have to take a coin from that pile you're never going to finish because what if taking a coin right now meant adding 10 coins later I hope you guys are following this weird metaphor but I hope it's making sense so when you when you are too afraid to make a mistake um, and honestly measuring is more in tuned with and I'm saying this only for advanced students I'm not saying this for beginners measuring can feel like um, you're taking a lot more than you're giving so at that point yeah it feels like if we over measured the, the, the pile of coins would never have started so let's just put something so that we have at least a pile of coins to gamble with right um, and that that's really that's really what I'm saying here today is that you know you try it try it it might it might shrink the pile down to, you know nothing but you want to believe that fixing this or trying this weird thing right now or trying the weird we uh, cheek pile here on the side of, of the fat trying the darker lipstick trying that crazy um, cast shadow on the eyes uh, messing around with the levels you know it might be damaging for the end but who knows it might have opened a door to something that would have added a hundred coins it might have significantly boosted the peak of this that is this painting and I feel like I did that a combination of the, the blur the hair the um, the, 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 the tilt in her chin that I wanted to push out a little further the sharpness of the chin there's just so much um, uh, that we I benefited from uh, this method so really in the end what you want to remember is uh, be aware of the fact that you may be personally attached and you might not ever have made these gambles um, with your work uh, so thank you everyone for all your support um, over these last couple of months it has been very very wild you guys are amazing I plan on making longer videos for you guys I plan on doing more uh, personal work and just allowing um, uh, myself to do this more just so I could have just so I could give you guys what you need out of your teacher which is these these design journals to humanize the painting process a little bit to show you that um, no, though necessarily the process will always be as intimidating as it was when you first painted you will be more equipped with better and you'll have more faith in the decisions involved in pu pulling off all this realism um, so you'll, you'll get more the struggle will stay the same but you'll have more rewards and and uh, that's something to look forward to as a student and I hope that these design journals reveal that to you. I hope that, you know, if you see an amazing painting, and I'm sure you guys see it and say, wow, you know, do I ever get there? How will I ever get there? I myself wondered, how the hell am I going to finish this painting? So, you know, I hope that reveals that, that, that it's not this glamorous, full glory process, that there is a lot of self mediation and self therapy while painting to keep you just on your painting just to, just to keep having faith and trying um, the, the way you guys basically um, you know already do your art just with a heightened sense of uh, need for faith because the more you know the more you can make mistakes with sort of um, the more ways that you can try something so you'll feel a little bit more lost but try this uh, get a reference or two 
and just jump in if you're if you feel like your fundamentals are goodness this is only happened because I was good at painting each individual feature if you're still having issues with individual features don't try this try to pull off a more believable formal structure for the head um, try to follow up with your forms and all of that um, and make sure that you have everything in place when it comes to the light and the contrast and if you don't have good edge language, you should not even be watching this video. You should be watching all my fundamental videos on form studies, etc. Um, so focus on that and, and you know, try to let yourself make mistakes for those who are prepared for this type of, of study. Um, and what happens? You know, let's see what happens. Uh, maybe you'll paint the best thing you've painted in a while. I sure did. Um, and as for, you know, the break, I believe that for the most part it's done. If you guys wanted to know what I've got left for the house, there's one room upstairs that needs paint. Um, there's one, there's the bathroom that needs a lot of work, but I'm going to hire people. I'm not doing any more. The porch is a shambles. I might, I might have people come in and do that. I will have people come in and do the porch. So I'm done. I'm done with this pilgrimage. I'm done with this part of my life that is construction. I have paid my dues, I have um, done the thing that everyone says to do, which is DIY it, DIY it, you learn a lot about yourself, you learn a lot about life, and I always wanted to rise to that occasion, um, and I, I, I've always dreamed about doing construction, as I felt like it would change me, and it did, I'm more patient, I'm more resilient, I'm I don't even know how strong I am now. Like physically, I, I used to lift at the gym and the gym has been closed because of the COVID thing, but I feel super strong. Um, so I, I benefited a great deal physically outside of the world of art. My person, myself, has benefited so much from this big project that I took on. It's a house flip. It's one of the biggest things you can do. It's You, you, you have a goal and you just don't meet it. I thought I was going to finish the house in March. It's a big lesson in patience. Um, it's August almost, and the house isn't done. Um, a lot is done, and it's it's amazing for your self-esteem to look around you and see what you did. Um, but uh, but I'm done with this part of my life. <laughs> I'm done with that construction. I'm done with the heavy work. I'm done with the with all of that, and I have reaped a lot of rewards um, from ta making this decision. I I'm so happy I chose this house because my neighbors are God sent. And, um, and yeah, it was just an amazing uh, experience letting myself relax. And I only learned how to do that from the crazy structural responsibilities, you know, to the house, uh, making sure that if I was going to flip it, I was going to do my research and my reading on architecture and structure and mechanics and all of that and learning every little tool that I had to use, every like 100 tutorials for the 100 tools I had to use, a lot of patience. I feel like I'm a better teacher. And I, at the end, came out in a painting like this. So it's like this painting is like a little look into the fact that I did make a good choice. And I'm, and I, you know, these design journals come with a bit of a personal thing. And I, I feel like mentally, uh, emotionally, physically, though I am tired and burned out, I'm a little bit more clear-headed when I teach. And I'm more um, mature, I guess. And I definitely feel like a 30-year-old. I just turned 30. <laughs> Thank you everyone for your support. Thank you for your patronage. Thank you for supporting me in the last couple of months. They have been trying financially because of the break. They have been trying emotionally. So you guys just being there and 100% supporting my life, my livelihood, my ability to even do all of this, my ability to sit down and take a break um, and just paint. That's all because of you guys and you guys are my lifeblood right now. You guys are um, my motivation. And I'm just so grateful for all of you. Thank you so much. The thing that I started Patreon for that many years ago has been fulfilled today. You guys have fulfilled the dream. And me being able to take a break and work on my house and paint at the same time is something you guys made possible directly out of you. Personally, you made it possible. So thank you so much again. And I'll see you guys next month. Bye.